guys, Rebuildable Ryan back again. Right now, we are looking at the Aquamaster RTA. There she is in all its glory. So, without further ado, we're going to drop it down real quick. I'm going to show you build, how to wick it, show you how it works, and we'll come back and I'll tell you what I think about it. All right, so right now we are down low with the Aquamaster RTA. This is going to be your outer sleeve. I'm going to say feel the flavor. Feel the airflow. Highlights. Piston. <clears throat> airflow control system. 2.5 milliliters of juice with the straight glass. 4 milliliters of juice with the bubble glass. And it comes with an 810 resin drip tip. On the back, it's going to have this little guy on there. Pretty cool looking dude. And you are going to have scratch and check on that side of the box. This is just going to be a sleeve. You're just going to pop her out. Put that sleeve to the side. Nothing else. The sleeve is going to be the only thing holding your stuff in there. Your tank is going to be right here. <clears throat> Bubble glass here. Straight glass is going to be pre-installed. Now, I'm going to take that. So, I'm going to take underneath. You're going to get this little peripheral pouch with some extra O-rings. Try tool and you're gonna get two extra grub screws in there. Put that back in there, put everything back in this box. So, at least for this one, when you take the chimney and glass section off, your O-ring, that's gonna sit between the bottom of the glass and the deck of the tank, for this was stuck to the bottom of the glass. So just pay attention to that. That you're getting that that o-ring back in between there when you reinstall it that might not be on every tank but at least for this one it was stuck to there this is going to be your top fill design with two very big kidney shaped juice fill holes that's going to be about one it's going to be about two full turns to take your uh top uh top piece off of the tank I don't know why I can't talk tonight but that drip tip is pretty nice this is the one that comes with the silver pretty nice drip tip I like it so <clears throat> your deck this is um, what they mean by the piston style airflow so on this side you're gonna see this little lever here and that's gonna be how you control your airflow right there it's all the way open if I turn it that way that's gonna shut it all the way down and if I flip it to this side so this is where your airflow is gonna come in now if I'm gonna take this lever and I'm gonna right now it's closed I'm gonna open it up I'll, I'll go slow so you can see it's going to slide that way and then drop down. Now that's all the way open right there. Now where that translates to is right underneath these coils. Let's see. I'm going to have to uh, lift one of these coils to show you. One second. Right now I got the airflow completely shut down. You're going to see right and there, that little circle, that's where your airflow is going to come in and then come up under each coil. It's going to be identical on the opposite side as well. So if you watch, as I open the airflow, that little piston is going to drop down. I'm going slow. And you can see on this side, as I open it over here, it's doing the same thing over here. So I'll raise it back up. And now that's completely shut down. And I'll open it back up. And that's wide open. So when it's wide open, that's going to look like that through your airflow. And when you shut it down, this is that's how it's going to shut down, just like that. Right in. As that opens up, the piston's going to drop down. As it shuts down, the piston's going to go back up and damn that circular hole up. 
pretty intricate. So <clears throat> your uh, wicks are not going to share a juice channel. You're going to have one channel on this side and one channel on this side and the same for the other side. So you're not going to share the juice channel. You're going to put each wick in its own little spot. And at first, I thought that those weren't very big wicking ports, and I was kind of worried, but we'll talk about that more shortly. I got my coils burning evenly. Let me pull up my manual autofocus because it does not like to autofocus. So I focus it on my own there, and you can see coils are heating pretty decently looks fine to me it'll do the job all right let my coils cool off a little bit and I'm gonna focus the camera a little bit got a piece of cotton bacon right here Now, like I say in all my videos, you do not want it so tight that it's going to move the coil, but you also do not want it so loose because that's going to cause spit back. So what I like to do is I like to get a nice fluffy piece. I don't pack it, but I kind of roll it. Make sure you wash your hands before you do this. You don't want nasty finger grease and crap, whatever's on your fingers all over this. So I won't pack it, but I'll get it all together. Twist and end up nice and tight. And then right where, <clears throat> right where it's going to start bulging, I like to get that a little bit tighter so that it doesn't just go to a fat spot in the cotton and rip off. So slide that part through, grab it, and as I'm pulling, because I use some fat cotton, I like to twist gently on this side that's about to come through so that it stays together. But once it's through, I bring it, bring it back a little bit, let it fluff back out, now that it's in the coil, I always cut it a little bit longer because you can always go shorter, you can't put cotton back on. So I'll go a little bit longer from my fluffing. And then after I fluff it, which on RTAs, perfect amount of cotton is crucial. If you don't have enough, you're going to leak or flood. If you have too much, you're going to be taking nasty dry hits. So it is very important to be patient when wicking an RTA. If you try to rush it and it's not right and you just throw it together anyways, you're not going to have a pleasant vape experience. Um, I would suggest starting with RDAs and building RDAs before you go to an RTA because at least You'll have some experience with cotton and rebuildables and stuff like that. So this isn't the this juice well or this um channel for where the cotton's gonna go isn't that far away from the cotton or from the coil, sorry. So it's not gonna be you're not gonna need a crazy amount of length. To reach the juice port. Now I'm just going around. I'll trim the edges off a little bit so that you're not stuffing the well. And then I just like to take a look and see where I'm at. If it starts to be too much, pull the cotton out of there and thin it out. If you're packing it in there, it's not right. 
So I'm gonna go ahead and finish this up and then show you guys. This is what we're looking like so far. Now what I like to do with an RTA is I'll get it going like so and then I'll get it all in there and then I'll juice it up and then um, I'll come back and double check and re retighten my cotton in there. So I got the juice flow, or sorry, I got the airflow shut down. I'm just gonna drop a little juice on each coil. Quickly pulse it. Alright, that'll be enough. I'll just come back because the cotton, once it gets juice in it, puffs up. I'll just come back and make sure everything is sitting right and not too jammed in there. Make sure uh, the juice is not going to have any restrictions flowing. And we are looking pretty good. Throw in some clouds. So, as you can see, I got that black O-ring sitting back down in there. You can take the top cap, drop it on there. I'm going to go backwards and then bring it back. Tighten it up. Throw it back on the mud. Fill her up with juice. And we are good to go. Alright, so we're going to keep this short and simple because that was a pretty lengthy down low. I'm at 74 watts with a .16 build. Not even a sign of a dry hit. I'm going to get nicked out before I get a dry hit. So I'm going to stop. <clears throat> I got the airflow wide open. The airflow is surprisingly smoother than I thought it was going to be. It's pretty much smooth all around the board. You can hear it. It's not the quietest, but I'm assuming if I lifted the coil, well, when I had the coils lifted up a little higher the other day, it was quieter and smoother, but slam down like it is i'm getting better flavor so i don't mind a little turbulence and some noise for better flavor long story short this little piston system um it feels a little chintzy in my opinion uh it feels cheap and i feel like if i use the tank every day and i'm um, adjusting airflow every day it's only a matter of time before something in there breaks so do i recommend this tank yes um but also i recommend getting your coil placement set getting your airflow set and leaving it not saying it is going to break but to me it doesn't feel like the highest of quality there's too many parts in there and it feels a little chintzy so that's probably my only con for this i thought those wicking ports were very tiny but as you can see at 74 watts it's keeping up perfectly fine I think has great flavor 
<clears throat> it keeps up with the wicking and to me it's aesthetically ple aesthetically pleasing it's a very very small dual coil tank uh, let's see if I put it next to I got a, a Falcon tank right here you can see the size difference for a dual coil rebuildable this thing is tiny it's very compact and it puts off a strong flavor and it puts off plenty of cloud So do I recommend this tank for $30? Yes. If this broke, I would go buy another one and not complain about it being cheap in the airflow because it, it behaves and acts very well and vapes great. If it broke, I would just buy a new one. It's 30 bucks. So I do recommend this tank. And that's all I got for you guys tonight. So have a good night and keep coming back.